Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Global Crime Time. I'm going to start this video with a warning that this video will contain material of a sensitive nature, so viewer discretion is strongly advised. Don't forget guys, please smash a like on the video and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget the bell for notifications of when my videos come out. Now, today we'll be looking into the case of Paul Francis Gadd. He is an English former glam rock singer who achieved success in the 1970s and 80s. His career ended after he was in prison for downloading child pornography in 1999 and was subsequently convicted of child sexual abuse and attempted rape in 2016 and 2015 respectively. This is a look into the crimes of Paul Gadd, but better known as Gary Glitter. Paul Francis Gadd was born on the 8th of May 1944 in Banbury, Oxfordshire, England. His mother was unmarried and initially brought him up with the help of her mother. Gadd never knew his father. Gadd was hard to control and at the age of 10, along with his brother, was taken into local care. Gadd frequently ran away from local care to London, always ended up in the clubs that were to be the launching ground of his career. By the time he was 16, Gadd was already performing at London clubs. His career grew as he appeared at such venues such as the Two Eyes in Soho and the Laconda and Safari Clubs. Famous Two Eyes coffee bar, at least what's left of it, what it used to be. Um, 1958, 59, that's where I used to sing. I mean, there's not even a plaque, you know, like they have Cliff Richard and Gary Glitter and people like that should have it on the wall there, don't you think? Gad gained his first break when film producer Robert Harford Davis discovered him and financed a recording session for Decca Records. In January 1960, at 15 years of age, under the stage name Paul Raven, he released his first single, Alone in the Night. A year later, he signed a new recording contract with Parlophone and worked with record producer George Martin. Martin produced two singles, Walk On Boy and Tower of Strength but neither sold very well and Gad's recording career as Paul Raven stalled. By 1964 he was reduced to working as an assistant and playing the warm-up for the British music television programme Ready Steady Go. He did numerous television commercials and film auditions Well music lovers, when you've made as many comebacks as Gary Glitter isn't it nice to know you can always come back to the great taste of Heinz lentil soup? Not off. Heinz soup. It's the taste people hunger for. And in the course of those activities, met record producer Mike Leander, who eventually helped Gad revive his career. As the glam movement took off in 1971, Gad adopted the new stage name Gary Glitter. Other options included Terry Tinsel, Stanley Sparkle and Vicky Vomit. The song that made Gary Glitter's name began as the A-side and B-sides of a single called Rock and Roll, parts one and two. Part two proved to be the more popular side in many countries, although it took about six months before it made its full impact, going to number two on the UK singles chart and reaching the top 10 in the United States. One of the few British glam rock records to do so. Rock and Roll part one was also a hit in France. It made number one and in the UK, both UK sides were listed together on the charts. Rock and Roll was followed by other successes over the next three years. Glitter, backed by the Glittermen band on stage, competed with Sweet, Slade and T-Rex for the domination of the charts. To reinforce his image, he reportedly owned 30 Glitter suits and 50 pairs of silver platform boots. He also released several singles which became UK top hits with I'm the leader of the gang and I love you, love me love. Despite his success in the UK, Glitter never made the same impact in America, where at best, glam rock was seen as a curiosity. Glitter had one more entry on the US chart with I Didn't Know I Loved You Till I Saw You Rock and Roll. After that, the closest chart success for Glitter was a cover recorded of I'm the Leader of the Gang I Am by the Brownsville Station. After subsequent releases stalled, Glitter announced his retirement from the music industry, 
to start a family life with his new partner in early 1976. That same year, his first hits package, simply titled Greatest Hits, was released. It entered the UK Top 40 bestseller charts. In July 1963, Glitter married Anne Merton. The following year, they had a son, also called Paul, and in 1966, a daughter, Sarah. They divorced in 1972. In February 2001, whilst living in Cuba, Glitter had another son, Gary Jr. Glitter was banned from driving for 10 years in 1986 following a conviction for drink driving. Been fined £2,000 and banned from driving for 10 years after admitting his third drink drive offence. This was his third drink driver conviction and he narrowly avoided being sent to prison. In November 1997, Glitter was arrested after a technician discovered pornographic images of children on the hard drive of a laptop that he had taken to a computer retailer in Bristol for repairs. Further images were discovered by police in searches of his homes in London and in Somerset. He was featured in the media massively over these allegations. Additionally, his appearance in the Spice Girls musical comedy film Spice World was cut out. At Bristol Crown Court on the 12th of November 1999, Mr Justice Butterfield sentenced Glitter to four months in prison and placed him on a sex offender register in the UK after he had admitted downloaded more than 4,000 items of child pornography. He was cleared of a charge of having sex with a 14 year old girl with whom he had had a relationship in the late 1970s. It was later revealed that the woman sold her story to the News of the World and stood to earn more money from the newspaper should Glitter be convicted. I deeply regret doing what I was sent to prison for. I've served my time. I want to put it all behind me. I've lived my life. Following rejection by the British public and facing scrutiny from the press following his arrest and conviction, Glitter fled on his yacht Voyager to Spain. He lived in Andalusia for six months on his yacht, which was moored at the marina. He told the locals that his name was Larry Brillante and spent his time frequenting local bars and surfing the internet. After his real identity became known in Soto Grande, he moved to Cuba and later to Cambodia, where he rented an apartment. In late 2002, he was detained over his previous sex offences and spent four days in jail before being released on bail. In January 2003, he was deported from Cambodia to Thailand on a flight to Bangkok. He subsequently settled in Vietnam. From March 2005, Glitter resided in Vang Thu, Vietnam, where he rented a luxury seaside villa and applied for permanent Vietnamese residency. He came to the attention of the Vietnamese authorities after being banned from a nightclub for allegedly groping a teenage waitress. Eyewitnesses also reported seeing him take two young girls into his home. On the 12th of November 2005, he fled his home. A 15-year-old girl was found living in his flat and was questioned by authorities. Police began searching for Glitter and he was arrested on the 20th of November at the International Airport in Ho Chi Minh City while trying to board a flight to Bangkok. Six Vietnamese girls and women aged from 11 to 23 claimed that Glitter had sex with them. After his arrest, Glitter was turned over to the police, returned to Vang Tao and held on suspicion of having sex with the two underage girls. Glitter was held in jail throughout the criminal investigation, which was completed on sick manner. Glitter continued to deny any wrongdoing, claiming to have been framed by the British tabloid newspapers on the 15th of June 2006, in a close hearing, a three-judge panel of the Supreme People's Court of Vietnam heard Glitter's appeal for a reduced sentence. The appeal was rejected four weeks later. Although he was calm throughout the 40-minute reading of the verdict, upon leaving the courthouse, Glitter shouted angrily to reporters and denounced Vietnamese justice for not hearing the defence arguments. On the 7th of February 2007, his sentence was reduced by three months. In anticipation of his release, the Philippines barred Glitter from entering their country as of the 16th of May 
2008. Glitter served his sentence in Thu Duc prison. He shared a cell with 18 other foreign inmates and was exempted from hard labour because of his age. In 2007, he suffered from high blood pressure and was put on medication and told to stop buying beer from the prison canteen. Beer from the prison canteen. In January 2008, after being taken to a prison clinic for treatment of stomach problems, tests showed that Glitter also had an irregular heartbeat. Later that month, he suffered a heart attack and collapsed in his cell. He was taken to a hospital where he was kept under police guard. He was visited in hospital by officials from the British Embassy. Glitter's lawyer said that his client intended to return to the UK, although he had also expressed interest in either moving to Hong Kong or Singapore. In the UK, it was reported that he would be placed on the Sex Offenders Register as soon as he put foot on British soil. British Home Secretary Jackie Smith said that Glitter should be given a foreign travel order, banning him from overseas travel. We need to control him, and he will be controlled once he returns to this country, she added. Glitter was released on the 19th of August 2008. He was escorted under police guard to Tan Sonat International Airport in Ho Chi Minh City, and put on a flight to London via Bangkok. In Bangkok, he claimed that he had tinnitus and a heart condition and refused to board the flight to London, despite the efforts of the British police sent to escort him. A doctor attending to Glitter prescribed him painkillers and declared him fit for travel. Glitter continued to refuse to leave. He booked himself into a transit lounge room and claimed he was a free man. He was refused admission to Thailand. Thai immigration officials gave him a deadline to leave the country and warned that he would be detained and deported to the UK if he did not leave voluntarily. On the 20th of August, Glitter took a flight to Hong Kong where he requested medical treatment, claiming that he was suffering a heart attack. The Hong Kong authorities also refused to admit him and he returned to Thailand the next day. At least 19 countries, including Cuba, Cambodia and the Philippines, announced that they would refuse entry to Glitter and on the 21st of August, the Thai authorities stated that he had agreed to return to the UK. At 10 past 7 in the morning on the 27th of August 2008, he arrived at Heathrow Airport, where he was met by British police officers. On his return to the UK, Glitter was added to the Sex Offenders Register for life. He stated an intention to appeal against the decision, but on the 16th of January 2009, it was announced that he would be abandoning the appeal. In October 2012, ITV aired the documentary The Other Side of Jimmy Savile, which detailed allegations of sexual misconduct against Savile, who had died the previous year. Dear Jim, ever since I can remember, I've always wanted to be a singer, but shyness has always got in the way. Please, could you fix it for me to sing? Yours sincerely, Debbie Coleman. Here's somebody to help her who also has a problem with being shy. Gary Glitter. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Debbie. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> the best part of the job. <laughs> the best part of the job. The best part of the job. Accounts included an accusation against Glitter, who was alleged to have raped a 13 or 14 year old girl in Savile's BBC dressing room. On the 28th of October, Glitter was arrested and questioned by police in London as part of Operation U Tree. Glitter was released on police bail until the middle of December and was bailed again until February. On the 5th of June 2014, Glitter was charged with eight counts of sexual offences committed against two girls aged 12 to 14 between 1977 and 1980. On the 19th of January 2015, Glitter appeared at Crown Court accused of seven counts of indecent assault, one count of attempted rape and two other sexual offences against three girls between 1975 and 1980. He was accused of sexually assaulting two girls aged 12 and 13 after inviting them backstage to his dressing room and attempting to rape a girl under the age of 10 after having crept into her bed. The trial lasted two and a half weeks. On the 5th of February 2015, Glitter was convicted of attempted rape, four counts of a decent assault and one of having sex with a girl under the age of 13. He was acquitted of the three other counts. He was remanded in custody at HM Prison Wandsworth prior to his sentencing. On the 27th of February 2015, Judge Alistair McCreef sentenced Glitter to 16 years in prison. In May 2015, 
Glitter began an appeal against his convictions, and on the 17th of November 2015, Glitter's appeal was denied by the Court of Appeal, which ruled that there was nothing unsafe about Glitter's conviction. In November 2015, it was announced that Glitter's performances, just like Jimmy Savile's appearances on BBC's Top of the Pops, would never ever be shown again. Glitter is incarcerated at HMP Prison of the Verne, and with 16 years in prison, will more than likely die in jail.